let's turn to HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. Larry, quick look back at Pacquiao Bradley. You watched the fight at home. What did you see? Pacquiao landed more and harder punches, but the judges seemed to rule. What else did he do to win the fight? Bradley, his manager, and his dog all agreed that they screwed it up. If you need a conspiracy, Pacquiao went into the fight having revealed that he gave up womanizing and gambling for religion. And how do you think that went over with the gods of Las Vegas? So now we move to an out from an outrage to the outdoors. Yeah, and just for the record, our Roy Jones, the other analyst here tonight, is one of many elite fighters who are on record as saying that was a decision that dishonored the sport. Now let's quickly look ahead to what's upcoming on HBO here in the next several weeks. Immediately following tonight's live boxing, stick around for my new show, The Fight Game, a 30-minute live report on the scoring controversy from last week's Pacquiao-Bradley fight. July 7, Boxing After Dark returns with 122-pound champion Nomito Donaire facing off with Jeffrey Matabulo of South Africa and a 168-pound matchup between Kelly Pavlik and Will Rosinski. One week later, British star and former 140-pound champ Amir Khan takes on Philadelphia's Danny Garcia with Garcia's 140-pound title belt at stake. July 21, 130-pound champ Adrian Broner takes on Vicente Escobedo, and Marcos Maidana faces Keith Thurman. August 7, it's the premiere of Hard Knocks, training camp with the Miami Dolphins. Go behind the scenes for five weeks of training camp with rookie head coach Joe Philbin, Reggie Bush, and newly acquired Chad Ochocinco as the Miami Dolphins prepare for the upcoming NFL season. And finally, on September 8, two top American fighters, Andre Ward and Chad Dawson, square off with 168-pound supremacy on the line. And Antonio DeMarco defends his 135-pound title against John Molina. For all that and more, log on to HBO.com. Back live at ringside in El Paso now, where we turn to HBO World Championship boxing expert Roy Jones. Roy, on paper, this is a matchup between a sit-down body puncher in Chavez and a stand-up boxer puncher in Andy Lee. What happens in that kind of a matchup? Usually when you get a matchup like that, you get a fight that you've been looking for for a long time, especially in an 18-foot ring. And I hear it's 18 by 17.6, so that's a very small ring, a very good chance that Chavez will be able to catch up with the taller Andy Lee. And what we'll have to see tonight is can Andy Lee sustain the pressure of Julio Cesar Chavez Jr.? No paint jobs tonight. Both guys are going to land some shots, right? They're going to land shots, and they're going to land plenty of them. All right. There should be some hard punching in this fight. Turning now to Larry Merchant. Larry, uh, many people are saying that last week's decision, Pacquiao Bradley, is once again the death of boxing. Uh, will tonight's fight between Lee and Chavez now resurrect it? Jim... Nothing will kill boxing and nothing can save it. Boxing is of itself, born with a black eye and sometimes disposed to blacken its other eye. This fight almost didn't happen because some concerned citizens in Texas felt that there would be waves of drug gangs coming over from Mexico right over there and do, doing who knows what. A compromise, no beer sales tonight at a prize fight. We roll on. <laughs> <laughs> and the format calls for the fighters to walk to the ring now, but there has been a delay in Julio Cesar Chavez's dressing room. It took a while for him to provide a urine sample. Andy Lee has been gloved up and warming up for quite some time. We're told that in the other dressing room, Chavez tried and failed to provide a urine sample, and the Texas State Commission has elected to take the sample after the fight. Incidentally, in the foreground there, you see Andy Lee's trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, and he has an extremely deep and close relationship with Andy. Andy Lee has lived in Stewart's house in Detroit for seven years. He's truly like a son to him, Larry. Uh, for our first fill element here, let's turn to the middleweight divisional picture graphic, and you run through it for us. Tell us what's going on in this neighborhood. Well, it's now an international division. Sergio Martinez, the Argentine, is recognized as the middleweight champion, but there are three fights coming up that will winnow the field down. Tonight's fight, Chavez and Lee for a title, then Sturm, the longtime German title holder against
against an Australian, Danny Gill. And then on HBO, two Eastern Europeans, Perot and Golovkin. And when all that's winnowed down, Jim, to one or two guys, then the uh, sanctioning bodies will find a way to expand it up to eight or 10 again. There are scenarios <laughs> under which either winner tonight, Chavez or Lee, could be expected to fight Sergio Martinez in the fall, but that kind of speculation has come a cropper before, so we wait to see if it will actually happen. Martinez, as you know, has had great difficulty trying to get the top middleweights into the ring with them. Meanwhile, there's considerable question in this locale as to whether Andy Lee could get a fair shake from the judges if, in fact, the fight went to the scorecards. But we are not dealing exclusively with local Texas judges here, as was the case in Nevada last week. So let's turn to Harold Letterman now. And Harold, why don't you run down for us the three men who will officially score the fight? I, I, I gotta tell you, Jim, I'm really impressed with the three judges working tonight. Ray Dead Psycho, a terrific young kid. I, I mean, this kid really is terrific. He worked Hopkins Pascal, and he definitely had the right score, 116-112 for Bernard Hopkins. He's good. John Kane from the Philippines, you know, he is so honest that he had uh, 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 Andre Wood winning by eight points over Carl Frosch in Atlantic right. City, while the other judges only had Andre can, Wood by I two points, and that was wrong. Kane, you know, a guy who will vote for the winner every time, but judges since 1994, excellent pick. Jesse Reyes, the best young judge in Texas, the best judge in Texas. He's a young guy. We see he worked uh, uh, Shane Mosley, Canelo Alvarez, but he's worked numerous fights. He worked a fight with my daughter for a flyweight title fight in Mexico, where all three judges had it exactly the same in a very close fight involving Edgar Sosa. Good judge. I think he'll do a fine job tonight. All right, we are told that Julio Cesar Chavez will require a little bit more time to warm up, this despite the fact that it was close to 100 degrees a couple of hours ago, but it has cooled off considerably. We're going to take a look now at a profile of Chavez's punches, and uh, Roy Jones, we're going to look at the fact that he throws, I think the number is 38% of his landed punches are body shots. That may be the highest percentage for any elite fighter in the sport, right? Yeah, it could be, but it's because of his style of boxing. You know, he's a straight ahead type of guy. He doesn't do a lot of movement, which allows him to have to break a guy down. Well, if you're gonna be a breakdown fighter, you gotta go in and take that body out. They say in the old days, kill the body and the head will die. Now, by contrast, Andy Lee lands 416 punches in the two fights that CompuBox counted for him and for which they did a punch zone report. And you see that the number of body shots landed was only 14%. Is that relatively low or is that average in your view? I think that's average in European because most of those guys are kind of straight up fighters who look to punch at the head mostly. They aim at that main target. So they don't really look to break guys down from the body shots. They look to more, uh, say, to outpoint you. And when they're trying to outpoint you, they know the head shots count mostly when it comes to outpointing somebody. But I can guarantee you one thing, Jim. The judges may have been upset with Pacquiao's delay last week, but I bet you they will not be upset with this man and his delay tonight. Interesting comment. Of course, Manny Pacquiao disappeared down the hallway from his dressing room prior to the fight last week and was gone for what seemed like a half hour or more, loosening up his calves and Roy Jones suggesting there, provocatively, that maybe the ringside judges weren't exactly thrilled with having to wait. So there you see Chavez warming up with his trainer, Freddie Roach. A few months ago, his last fight took place here in Texas, and incidentally, he had trouble providing a urine sample that night as well. It came against Mexican veteran Marco Antonio Rubio, who last year had a spectacular knockout of a young middleweight prospect from Canada named David Lemieux. And that was the story going into this fight. But Larry, before a good-sized crowd in San Antonio, Rubio was up against it because Chavez came into the ring weighing 180 pounds. I think, Jim, that that was a kind of a near-death experience for a young fighter. He himself exclaimed after the fight, I could not beat Martinez under these conditions. That he allowed to happen, basically. So I think he's... Uh, gone back to school on this on that fight and he does he does come in uh, in what seems to be more reasonable shape tonight Roy in the late rounds with about a 12 pound functional weight advantage in the ring Chavez was leaning on Rubio and Rubio was reduced to arm punching against a guy who at that point was something like a wall 
Yeah, it's a wall because of how much weight he's able to gain. And to me, that was kind of a positive early in his career because it always gave him a substantial size advantage on his opponents. Now, tonight, I don't think he'll go up as high because I think he got down in weight a little quicker. But the bad part of that is, Andy Lee may be the tallest or, say, biggest middleweight that he's faced. Yep, and it'll be interesting to see what the comparative weights are coming into the ring. It is not expected that Chavez Jr. will have the kind of weight advantage against Lee tonight that he did against Rubio. But again, as Roy Jones points out, he didn't have to lose 15 pounds in two days in the middle of the week either, as was the case last time when Chavez had to go through, really, a starvation diet to have a chance to make weight. On the other hand, we talk about Andy Lee, Southpaw style, Olympic experience. Uh, he was headed toward this title shot four years ago before he ran into a rough customer named Brian Vera. And in his words, Roy Jones, he got suckered into the kind of fight that he shouldn't have fought with Brian Vera, and he got outmanned by a full-on brawler. Yeah, and if he got out manned by Brian Vera, then he may have real problems on his hands tonight because he's really facing a sure enough grown man in the ring tonight. Well, he did avenge the loss to Vera with a better performance in Atlantic City last year. And uh, right now, Larry, we're going to take a look at some highlights from Lee's career. This will be Lee against Craig McEwen of Scotland. This fight took place last year in Foxwoods, and this was a fight which truly became a life and death enterprise for Andy Lee. All right, that first Vera fight was Andy Lee's near-death experience as a young fighter, and he came out and became more composed in the ring after that. But he was behind in this fight um, against also a good young southpaw fighter uh, who had been unbeaten at the time, and uh, at the end of the night, whatever happened uh, between the start and the end, uh, Andy Lee knew that um, he had to pull something out of himself that had never been asked before. And this time, in this fight, he did. Andy Lee rallied down the stretch in a fight in which he appeared to be totally out of it. He was fighting without Emmanuel Stewart in his corner. Emmanuel that night was dealing with Miguel Cotto in another arena. And in late in the fight, Lee began to land the power punches that turned it around. Roy, psychologically, how important is it for a fighter to score this kind of comeback knockout win? That's very important for a fighter like Andy Lee because it gives him a sense of confidence about himself that he's never had before. He never knew that put in this situation, he could come back and pull victory out of the jaws of defeat. So that showed Andy Lee a lot about Andy Lee that particular night, and he did it without the Mayor Stewart there. So that helped a little bit too. There was the knockout, and it was a convincing one because Lee got a little bit of a rarity there, a Steve Smoger stoppage without a count. That doesn't happen very often. It's a mark of how much punishment he was able to deal out. We're gonna take a look at Andy Lee's resume and Roy, I pointed out the contrast between Lee, who has a deep amateur background, went to the Olympics for Ireland. Julio Cesar Chavez had no virtual, virtually no amateur background at all. How big an advantage for that is Lee at this point in their careers because Chavez already has 45, 46 professional fights. Well, to me, it's not really such a big advantage anymore because when you look at the European fighters, they're kind of stand-up fighters anyway. They don't do a lot of bobbing and weaving or dipping and ducking to the side. They're kind of stand-up, straight-ahead fighters, as is Andy Lee. When you look at the Mexican fighters, they fight so quick and so often, so their experience comes as professionals. Look at his father. His father had over 100 professional fights. We don't do that no more, <laughs> you know? So that makes up for an amateur career that was missed. In Mexico, you don't need an amateur career if you can fight 100 or 50 professional fights. All right. Larry Merchant, before we move on to the subject of Julio Cesar Chavez and his resume, your perspective on Andy Lee. Has he improved throughout his professional career, or do you see him as the same guy that he was three, four years ago? He has to be a better fighter. Uh, his relationship with Emmanuel Stewart, uh, like no other, 28 years old, in his prime, he's primed for this fight to find out if he is a primetime fighter. All right, we're not going to need to look at Julio Cesar Chavez's resume graphic because I'm told we are ready now to move forward to the tail of the tape. So let's take a look at the vital statistics for Chavez Jr. and Andy Lee. They are both in the prime of their careers. You could say that Chavez Jr. has a two-year age advantage, but frankly, that doesn't mean anything when they're 26 and 28. They're both ready for this assignment tonight. 
Chavez Jr. listed as 6'1 here. Lee has only 6'2, but when they stood together in publicity photos, it appeared that Lee was at least two inches taller than Chavez Jr. And Chavez Jr. acknowledged in our meeting yesterday that he was surprised when he first saw Andy Lee at how tall Lee is. And an arm length advantage of two and a half inches for the Irish fighter. And they both weighed in at, well, under the 160 pound limit for Chavez to be 159 and Lee 159 and a quarter. Now, the two fighters are being partially driven to the ring because of the distance between the dressing rooms and the ring. A little bit of a thrill for them, Roy, to get into a stretch hammer and come out here, right? You know, that's a very good way with the fireworks and all. That's a very intriguing way to come to the boxing ring. You come to the ring in style and hoping that you will leave the ring in style. Emmanuel Stewart has told close friends Larry Merchant that deep in his heart, this will be his most emotional fight in 23 years since the second fight between his Tommy Hearns and Ray Leonard. Why? Because Lee has lived in his house for seven years, and this is truly a father-son relationship. Uh, uh, almost like a father-baby relationship. And But coming from uh, Emmanuel, uh, that says a lot. And they do communicate well, even though Emmanuel is a globe-trotting uh, guy a uh, trainer this is a kind of silent parade for Andy Lee there are no fans here for him or very few but he hears the cheers in his head for what he's gone through in a long amateur and a six-year professional career and just to show that dreams can come true Roy this wasn't a case of the great Emmanuel Stewart going to the Olympics and scouting and choosing this kid because he's a great talent Andy Lee came to Emmanuel Stewart, personally approached him, said, I want you to train and manage me. And Stewart said, yeah, okay. And that was very smart. Look at his height. Look at the height of Tommy Hearns. Look at the style of box that Tommy Hearns was. That's what Andy Lee wanted to be. So if you want to be like that, why not go to the trainer who trained possibly one of the best fighters of all times at that particular style? It's a great part of the narrative here tonight. We have the two premier hired gun trainers in the sport. Two Hall of Famers going against each other. But Emmanuel Stewart very assiduously picks out the fighters who fight in the style that he appreciates, while Freddie Roach will deal with almost anybody. Yeah, Freddie Roach will take almost anything. He doesn't really care, but if I were Emmanuel, at Emmanuel's age, you definitely want to deal with what you deal with best. And that's the tall, rangy guy with a good straight jab and a good power punch behind it. By the way, Emmanuel Stewart was with us in Las Vegas last Saturday night, as you know. Flew off from Las Vegas to Austria to spend three full days in Austria setting up Vladimir Klitschko's camp for his upcoming assignment against Tony Thompson. Got on a plane to come back here to El Paso. I understand it wasn't a terribly easy trip, Larry, but here he is in one piece and ready to work. He keeps doing it because he loves it and because he keeps doing it. Um, and it's still at this age, after all these fights and all these champions, every time he gets in the ring, it's almost like his first one. Hey, I think Lee showed up in a black Hummer, and now here comes the good guy, I guess, in a white Hummer, right? Yeah, he's in a white Hummer with the girls driving it, so he's letting you know that I am the man. <laughs> if you put that car over the he became a better puncher, he became an awesome body puncher, much like his father. In his next to last fight against Peter Manfredo, he shocked the world by bobbing and weaving and dancing on his feet and counter punching. Do you expect to see any of that tonight? Uh, I don't expect to see much of that tonight because his job tonight is to catch Andy. All right, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer now for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, bienvenidos. Welcome to Sun Bowl Stadium, University of Texas, El Paso, and the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. Presented by Bob Barham's Top Rank Incorporated in association with Zanfer Promotions and DeBella Entertainment. Sponsored by the city of El Paso, Texas, the safest city in America. Visit ElPaso.com. Along with AT&T, Rethink Possible, and Tecate con Character. 
sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, Chairman William Kuntz, Boxing Administrator Dickie Coles. And the World Boxing Council, President Jose Sullivan, Supervisor Alberto Leon. This contest is dedicated to the memory of Johnny Tapia and Teofilo Stevenson. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout. From the Philippines, Ray Danseco. From England, John Kane. And from Texas, Jesse Reyes. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, from Texas, your referee, Lawrence Cole. And now, the officials are ready. The fighters are ready. Damas y caballeros, están listos? Are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world on HBO, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get her ready to rumble! Fighting out of the blue corner with Hall of Fame trainer Emmanuel Stewart wearing Kronk Gold. Official weight, 159, one quarter pounds. This 2004 Olympian now has a professional record of 28 victories, including 20 knockouts with only one defeat. He is the challenger, and he is the fighting pride of Limerick, Ireland, one of the top-ranked middleweight contenders in the world, Irish, Andy Lee. And fighting out of the red corner with his Hall of Fame trainer, Freddie Roach, officially weighing 159 pounds. As a professional, his record stands at 45 victories, including 31 knockouts without a loss, and he has one draw. He's the reigning, defending, undefeated WBC middleweight champion of the world, De Culiacan, Sinaloa, Mexico, El Invicto, El Campeón del Mundo, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Commands, correct shops all times. Now let's have a good, clean fight and good luck. Lay Olympe, you win no suerte. Two words to the judges effective aggression. <laughs> Two more words effective aggression. <laughs> I got a better idea. No judges. <laughs> May not need them. Concussion City. These are man-sized punchers in a man-sized fight. Roll reversal at the start with Lee pressing Chavez. Well, I kind of expected that. I just hope Andy Lee doesn't bag straight up too often because if he does, he'll find himself sitting down. It's regarded as a given, Roy, that Julio Cesar Chavez would have trouble winning the fight from the outside. So he's just looking for the moment when he's going to step in, or at least that's what we expect, right? Yeah, that's what we're thinking. Looks like Andy Lee is going to make it tough for him to get in, though. Lee has a pretty good jab. Excellent straight left hand, and maybe his best punch is his quick right hook. It's kind of a dream in the Lee camp. He can catch Chavez with some of those quick right hooks when Julio Cesar Chavez does not see them coming. Yeah, I don't think that was a foul then, but... <laughs> well, Lawrence Cole is a referee who has been frequently criticized in the boxing world. And maybe some of that criticism goes to the fact that he is the son of the chairman of the Texas State Commission, but he's had a lot of big fight assignments here in Texas, and some of them haven't gone all that well. Good quick right hook by Lee. Chavez lands the left upstairs. 
You gotta love Lee's jab early, though. The jab is what's controlling the fight for him right now. If he does this all night, he can make it a long night for Chavez Jr. Okay. Chavez comes in with a left hook. Good punch. Now Chavez begins to step into the distance where he can begin to work and do damage. Right and the left by Chavez. And that's where Lee has to get that head down. And goes back to working his jab. That's the first straight left hand up the middle Lee tries. Falls just a little short. Lee again lands the jab as Chavez just bull rushes. No angle. Two quick little rights by Lee. Chavez has landed punches surely in single digits this round. Yeah, but they were pretty heavy punches, Joe. They were. Uh, well, it looks like a student trying to figure out uh, a problem on an exam. How do I get in? But the two or three times he stepped in, he was able to land. There's a left uppercut by Lee and a couple more jabs to keep Chavez at distance. Low activity round for Chavez. When he attacked, he did well. But most of the round has been fought at distance and controlled by Andy Lee's jab. Nine over ten. Nine over ten. That's what you're doing. Keep control right here. Sooner or later, you're going to catch him with that left hand. Now he may try to come in and want to step it up. Just keep doing what you're doing. You relax. Control him right here. And sooner or later, he's going to get caught with something. Fighting a beautiful fight. Beautiful. Where's the bottle at? Water. I'll go up for football. Yeah, relax. All right. Put a little more pressure on him, okay? All right. We gave, we gave, we gave that one away. A little more activity, okay? Keep busy. Good. Yeah. Here you see Chavez Jr. use his dad's old trick and step up and feint the right hand and come with the left hook and boom, right on the chin. What a great shot by Chavez Jr. His best punch of the round by far. And one of only two punches which CompuBox saw him landing in the round. CompuBox had Chavez two of eight. I don't know when I've seen a guy throw single digits in a round. Andy Lee, 13 of 59, 22%. If you listen to the two trainers, they scored the round and made it clear how they scored him. Without a doubt, what you're seeing is the tall guy in the lead with the jab controlled the fight early because Chavez got to realize that he's going to take a punch or two in order to get in and land his shots. But he has to get in and land his shots and stay there once he gets there. Like and that. again, Chavez lands the left hook right on Andy Lee's chin. There's a hole in Lee's defense. It should not be that easy for a conventional fighter to just step up and land his left hook like that. Well, this kid has been learning boxing, boxing since he was a young kid. That was one of his father's favorite moves against another against a southpaw. Step the right foot up and bring the left hook, and that's what he's doing. Box. Stop! Step back. Clean. Good left hand by Chavez. Now Lee pops Chavez with the jab. Keeping him occupied with the jab. Another left hook lands for Chavez. And for the first time, Chavez throws to the body. Lee can't keep taking that big left hook from outside like that either. He has to learn to defend it. Lee well, had a reputation for not fighting on the inside. He just landed a nice little uppercut on the inside, trying to uh, change that defect in his armor. Chavez still trying to figure out the body language of Lee, uh, the, the percentages of when to hold him and when to go. Hard left hand by Lee, and another, and an uppercut. A rally by Lee. Good left hand by Lee. One punch was partially blocked, but the other couple landed, and landed well. Good body shot by Chavez. Uppercut lands for Lee. And early on, you're seeing how good Julio Cesar Chavez's chin is. Lee lands a couple really good shots. They don't move Chavez. He comes forward. 
What you really like about Chavez, though, is that Lee's just landing his hardest shot, and now Chavez is coming to him with the hardest shots that he's been throwing tonight, especially to the body. Almost has a sense to say Lee ticked him off. <laughs> See, Lee is not jabbing anymore like he was earlier. He's allowing Chavez to just walk in. He can't beat him like Time! There was a moment in Julio Cesar Chavez Sr.'s career when that terrific left hook had won him 93 fights without a defeat. As Roy pointed out, wound up with more than 100 professional fights in his career. You don't see that anymore. Tuesday night, catch the next edition of Real Sports as we visit with former NBA head coaching legend Phil Jackson, currently contemplating a possible return to the NBA, where he won 11 titles with the Chicago Bulls and the Los Angeles Lakers. July 7, on Boxing After Dark, Nonito Donaire defends his 122-pound title against Jeffrey Matabula of South Africa. And former middleweight champion Kelly Pavlik faces Will Rosensky in a 168-pound matchup. Good job, okay? Keep that pressure on him a little bit more, okay? All right? Here you see the best punch that Andy Lee has landed tonight. He threw a right jab, followed by a straight left hand with under jab, followed by a straight left hand that landed high on the head of Chavez Jr. But that shot seemed to wake Chavez Jr. up and make him realize, okay, that's enough. Now I gotta get to this guy. Second round was closer than the first. It's still a fight between the activity of Lee and some very good shots from him and the harder shots that Chavez has been able to land stepping up inside. Not as many but eye-catchingly hard. When, when Lee was 12 years old, he watched Oscar De La Hoya fight here. And by the third round, the fight was over. We never got to a third <laughs> round. <laughs> One of the most unusual nights I can ever remember in boxing history. We had more than 46,000 people in the stadium that night, and to my eyes, well more than half of them were women. It's the only time I've ever been in a sports event, Roy, where I saw groups of four, five, and six women coming in here with no men. They had clearly gone and bought the tickets themselves. Well, that was an absolutely beautiful night. <laughs> yes, it was. And it was the height of Delaware's career, of course. Good right hand by Chavez Jr. right there. Left hand for Lee. Chavez leaned into it. The one thing we got to watch for here, though, is that Lee faded a little bit in the McEwen fight in the middle parts of the fight. He cannot fade in the middle part of this fight because Chavez is only going to get stronger as this fight goes. Lee also faded in his only loss against Brian Vera, wound up with a technical knockout loss, although he never touched the canvas. Neither fighter has ever been knocked down in his professional career. Two good body shots from Chavez. Crowd wakes up for that. Now Chavez taking over the action as he hammers to the body again. More and more it looks, Roy, if they fight in the center of the ring, Lee has the advantage. If they go to the ropes, Chavez may have a chance to take over. He does, and the problem is Lee is not throwing enough punches to keep him at bay, and he's not using his jab as much as he was earlier. So he right hook for Lee, Chavez, two shots to the body. Exactly. If Lee would use that jab as a stabbing pole to measure his left hand and make a good enough hand come down the pipe, then Chavez would respect him a little bit more. But he's not. And Chavez's title-gaining win against Sebastian Spick of Switzerland about a year and a half ago, two judges scored the first four rounds against him, and a third scored it three to one after the first four rounds. He got a slow start in that fight and then rolled through the late rounds on his body shots to win a decision. And to me, that's why they would take the Andy Lee fight, because Andy Lee always gets weak, weak in the middle of the fight, then he comes back. Break time! Three rounds in the books. You, you win it, you won that round, okay? So you're, you're up two to one. But just keep boxing on my side out here, okay? You're boxing and beautiful. You don't have to go and see. You're fighting a good fight, just said, but just keep boxing on my side, okay? You're in great shape. 
You know, you're used to boxing while you're tired. This guy's no damn stronger than what you've been boxing with. Okay. Just use your kill him, okay? I, he's not strong enough for you. You put some pressure on him for me, okay? Don't wait on him. Don't let him be first, all right? You be first, okay? All right, press him combination body and head, okay? Put that pressure on him, okay? Right. You're too strong for him. Let's go. Combi box numbers in three. Chavez, 9 of 27, 33%. Lee, 16 of 58. You heard Emmanuel Stewart say that he scored the round for Lee, although he also said that he scored the second round for Chavez. Harold, how do you have it through three? Well, I agree with Emmanuel Stewart. I got it two rounds to one. Andy Lee, 20, uh, 29 to 28. You know, Jim, Andy Lee boxed beautifully rounds one and two. Julio really didn't throw enough punches. Andy just outworked him. But in round three, Chavez got inside, showed who's got more power in this fight. I mean, when Julio lands, he lands an awful lot harder than Andy Lee. So I thought Julio did pull out the third round by, you know, really whacking him on the inside. Two rounds to one, Andy Lee. Interesting, you've got the same score as Emmanuel, but you do slightly disagree. It was the second round that Emmanuel thought uh, Chavez had won. So now we're well into round four. And what you see here is Chavez is really, really trying to work Andy Lee, make him throw a lot of punches, make him use his legs a lot to try to wear him down late in the fight. Is he still waiting and allowing Lee to be first too often? He is waiting a little too long, but if he cuts the ring off, he won't, the waiting won't bother, won't affect him. All right, now let's lay out a bit and listen to Emmanuel Stewart as he calls instructions into Andy Lee. Right back to he's, him right there. He's getting tired, Andy. There you go. Right back to him. Step around. Back. Back. Right back to him. Well, Emmanuel said right back to him, and Lee produced a three punch combination. Let's go. Box. Lawrence Cole tells Andy Lee to keep his punches up. Hard right hand by Chavez. Good, quick shot. Lee wasn't ready for it. Get your jab back, Andy. Cole told Lee to keep him up, but then didn't see the left hand that Chavez landed on the hip. <laughs> I don't think he's paying that any attention anyway. Uppercut by Lee. What a chin Chavez has. Took it, absorbed it, rallied back with five or six shots. He, he landed his own uppercut too deep, too good, though, Jim. Hard right hand by Chavez. Good comeback by Lee right there. Lee is doing a good job of staying low and staying set to punch. Body shot by Chavez, that one hurt. Good right hook by Lee. That's Andy Lee's best punch. Misses with that right hook. They are testing each other hard. Right, right hand by Chavez, and another. Andy Lee's chin stands up too. <laughs> Smart by you, and you box with it. You're outboxing it, guy. You don't have to fight inside, Andy. Box the man, you understand? Your head as long as you're boxing it. And get yourself together and just talk to yourself. Now, this is it, man. This ain't no second chance. Get out and box him. He's getting tired, too. You don't realize he's getting tired also. But just make him have to move and have to pivot outside, you can see his tiredness. You're leaning in there letting him rest. Okay, get to boxing. Because he's getting himself. Get, get back to boxing. Here you see early in the round, Chavez pivots around with a right hand. Andy wasn't ready for it. Bam, right on the chin, right in the mouthpiece, you should say. <laughs> then they come back and Chavez lands a, up, a left uppercut while Andy lands a right uppercut. Be I mean, both land left uppercuts. Beautiful uppercuts by both fighters. Power punches in round four. Chavez 22 of 48, Lee 15 of 32. That means Chavez threw no jabs in the round because that was his overall copy box number as well, 22 of 48. Pretty clear to me, I think, that Chavez probably won the fourth round. Seems like an even fight at this point, or close to it. And you heard what Emmanuel Stewart said to Andy Lee. This is your chance. Don't let it go to waste. The only problem we got with Andy is he got to go to the bottom a little bit more. Hey. 
This is this is the bravado of a fighter named Chavez. <laughs> And the crowd loves it, but the fact is that Lee is scoring early in the round. Here's a good hard left hook by Chavez. And that one hurt Lee. And Lee is falling for what Chavez wants him to do, which is fall into a puncher's fight. That's not what he should be into, but he's falling for it. Well, you heard Emmanuel Stewart say you don't have to fight him on the inside. But at the end of the day, in a war of wills, the body puncher usually wins that war. Yeah, and that's why I say Andy's not going to the body enough. And that's why Chavez is favored by about three to one. Now they touch gloves after what was apparently a headbutt. Look, I see no blood, luckily for us. Good body shot by Andy Lee. That's what he needs to do. Yeah. That'll put him back into the round. Lee lands on the hip, just as Chavez did a while ago. And Chavez looks at Lawrence Cole like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Chavez better wake up and start throwing a few more punches, though. Because sometimes when you absorb this many big shots, it takes just as much out of you as if you had thrown the big shot. Hard left hand by Lee. That's Chavez off. One, two by Lee. Good right hook. Lee is in front of him right now. Chavez needs to do something to get, get back in front of Lee, like that. Straight right hand for Chavez. He's getting much better upstairs, no question about it. The work with Freddie Roach over the course of the last few years, two years, has changed Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. There's a perfect counter right hand. It sure was. And two hard body shots. Lee's been hurt twice in this round, I think. Good double hook by Lee, though. They're working. They're both fighting a wonderful fight. Hard working fight. Going in, the thought was that Lee was the bigger puncher. But Chavez has shown that he's got the chin to deal with it. Who thought he who now, thought? Now it's vice versa. <laughs> Does Lee have the chin to deal with Chavez? Who thought Lee was the bigger puncher? Because they was that's who was crazy. <laughs> Well, it doesn't look that way tonight. I mean, it certainly looks as though Chavez's blows, taken individually, do more damage. Time. But Andy Lee has landed many more punches. He is tired. You don't realize it. He's walking in. He's tired. You still got better reflexes. The fact that you can punch and pull out of your out. He's tired. Here Khan versus Danny Garcia coming up Saturday, July 14th. Just watch him now. I think you the battle is for Garcia's 140-pound belt. Khan trying to regain the premier spot in the division. Just get back and Adrian Bronner versus Vicente Escobedo coming along okay. Saturday, July 21. Totally Marcus Maidana against Keith take Thurman take on the jail. undercard. Okay. Broner fighting in his hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio. And a good fight, just boxing, but he's tired, man. He's tired. And I can see it. He's tabbing and everything. And just keep the box. He sees Chavez coming in, going down with that right hand, faking down with the right hand, come over the top with the left hook like he always does. And I'm sick of seeing him consistently land the same punch. But if you consistently get hit with that punch, it's gonna hurt. And here you see him come with the right up, uppercut to the head, left body shot, trademark punch for him and his father. Good uh, round. Chavez landed 19 of 39, nearly half of his punches. Lee landed 26 of 68. That was a 38% connect rate and Lee's high connect rate for the fight. And uh, our judge, Harold Letterman, obviously admired the harder shots from Chavez as he gave him the round. What do you think that Emmanuel Stewart is saying when he says he's tired? Is he concerned about Lee being tired? Yes, he's trying to just give Lee extra confidence because if he realizes this kid's last name, uh, they don't get tired. <laughs> Pick it up. It's hit round. It's hit round the cup. Our interpreter Jerry Olaya now tells us that. In the corner between rounds, Julio Cesar Chavez complained to his trainer, Freddie Roach, of right leg cramps. Cramp, uh, cramps a logical product of Julio's legendary struggles with weight. Dehydration, not a lot of potassium in the system because you sweat it all out making the weight. So sometimes those cramps will occur. And he couldn't produce a specimen with a drug test before the fight. Apparently doesn't need full right leg power to throw body shots because he's hammering Lee in the corner over there once again. Yeah, and it's taking right. some of the steam off of Lee's punches as you're starting to see. The body shots from Chavez are. 
But Lee's still going to the body good. You have to give him that credit. Lee on the belt line. Lee one, two upstairs. Lee with the quick little right hook. More and more. Julio Cesar Chavez looks like a middleweight Mack truck. He seems to be more and more a middleweight with the chin of a light heavyweight and the body punching power of a light heavyweight. Or and, super middleweight. And the body size of a light heavyweight. <laughs> well, he entered the ring for the last fight unofficially weighing 180. We don't have an unofficial weight on him tonight, but he did not expect to make it all the way up to 180 tonight. I he was saying it would be 73 or 74. I believe he's close. Well, it looks big. <laughs> no question. Solid body. The good shot. right hook by Andy Lee. Chavez walks right through. Good body shot by Lee. These punches are starting to lose a little steam, though. We'll be halfway through the fight at the end of this round. More and more, it's becoming a war of attrition. And winning a war of attrition with a fighter like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is very hard. Oh, good body shot. Andy's not using his straight left enough. Hard right hand by Chavez, hard right hook by Lee. Body shots by Chavez to punctuate the round. Cramps didn't bother him very much, apparently. Okay. You okay? I, I know it's tough, okay? Hey, let's go champion, okay? All right, let's fight hard, okay? You put the pressure on him. You put him on the ropes, all right? Left uppercut. Dose, body head, all right? Get that damn, he got something to bang and hold his body up on. Keep him out in the center of the ring and box his ass. Change the speed. Load up on the shots, you're hitting him, man. Just bing, bing, and get out. Pretty simple advice from Emmanuel Stewart. Take him back to the center of the ring and box his ass. Not that easy to do. <laughs> I think he'd have, he'd have done it if he could have done it. Power punches in round six. Chavez 24 out of 50. He's landing at about a 50% rate. Lee 20 of 47. Harold, how do you have it through six? Look at you. I had a 58-56. Four rounds to two. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. You know, Jim, what I judge, and I think it's the right way to judge, is who's doing more damage in a round. And Andy Lee insists on standing there head to head toe-to-toe -to -toe and banging with Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and he can't out-bang him. Julio hits too hard. He's doing more damage in four rounds in a row. Andy outworked him big time in rounds one and two. But I tell you, since then, three, four, five, and six, Julio gets inside, he hits him, he snaps his head back. Andy Lee looks like he's been in a, in a war. Julio looks like he had a mark on him. Four to two choppers. I have it, three each. And Andy looks, seems to have a swelling on that left eye now. It's all about the power of Chavez's shots. And more and more, Lee is being reduced to an arm puncher as Chavez hammers his body and takes his power away. So big for a middleweight, Jim. This is what people don't understand. This is where that size differential comes into play. At. When a guy is this big and leaning and banging on you and he can punch for real, it's very hard for you to match him pound for pound with punching power. And that's what Lee's trying to do. And he's not going to win the fight fighting this type of a fight. Larry, could he have been this kind of fighter in the era when they weighed in on the day of the fight? Well, if he wanted to fight at light heavyweight. <laughs> Chavez just lands and lands. Both body shots landed and the uppercut there. Lee's uppercut missed. And more and more, when Lee lands, it doesn't mean much. Chavez is just walking through it, pounding Lee to the body. Hammering him against down. the ropes in the oh, corner. There he is. He's out. We've got a knockout coming. Yeah. Lee's badly hurt. Lawrence Cole's going to stop the fight. Technical.
technical knockout for Julio Cesar Chavez as he hammered Andy Lee into submission. This was not a black eye, another black eye for boxing. That's why I said earlier, we roll on. A brilliant fight. An amazing display of power punching by Julio Cesar Chavez. Back at the beginning of his career, Roy, the notion that he could rise to the point where he could go in and take the measure of a former Olympic star, a guy with the pedigree of Lee, was regarded as ludicrous. What a fighter he's become. Yes, the guy has grown into a true primetime prize fighter. Now I can't wait to see him and Martinez fight. Brilliant finishing blurst by Chavez mixing to the body and the head and all night long. He mixed brilliantly to the body and the head. I think sometimes he surprised Lee when he would come upstairs to lead in. Yeah, it's almost, it's almost hereditary, you know. It, it looks so much like the old Julio Cesar Chavez of old when he's inside throwing the body shots, coming back up to the head. You don't find many fighters that can work the body like that and follow it off with head shots. Vicious so, head shots. En route to the seventh round TKO, Chavez landed 31 of 54 punches in the round. Lee was 10 of 47. There was a growing gap between them as the fight went on. The gap was strength and power. Chavez's chin is remarkable. His punching power, particularly to the body, is remarkable. His punching power upstairs is getting better. Freddie Roach is polishing a diamond. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the TKO. We have a stoppage of the contest at 2 minutes 21 seconds as referee Lawrence Cole steps in and calls a halt to the bout. The winner by TKO victory, still the undefeated WBC middleweight champion of the world, the Culiaca Sinaloa, Mexico, Julio Cesar. Chavez Jr. Well, let's take a look at final copy box numbers. Where Julio Cesar Chavez is extremely impressive. Seventh round technical knockout of Andy Lee. Chavez almost matching Lee in total punches because of the furious burst down the stretch of the fight. In round six and seven, he was simply amazing. Lee throwing. Nearly 200 more punches, but Chavez landing at that remarkable 48% overall rate. He's a very accurate puncher, even against a southpaw. And take a look at the power shots. Chavez landing 47% of his power shots. He mixed them brilliantly upstairs and downstairs. This was not just a body punching display. Andy Lee had a pretty decent night in the power punch category, but they were less and less powerful as the fight went on. This was all about the power of your shots. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring with Chavez Jr. Uh, okay, congratulations, Leo. Why did you win this fight? Eh, bueno, eh, empecé a estudiarlo. Primero quería ver su pegada, qué podía hacerme. Vi que no tenía nada y me lancé enfrente sobre él. I started to study him. I wanted to see if he had any power. I saw he didn't have anything, and that's when I came on. And that is your usual pattern. Ese es tu patrón normal. Did any of his punches get your attention? Cuando entré primer round, lógicamente es un poco frío uno y siente los golpes, pero en ningún momento me hizo nada. Si te fijas, yo le puse la cara y todo para que me diera. No me podía lastimar nunca. In the first round, maybe I was a little cold, but as you saw during the fight, I put my face out to see if he can hit me, but he never hurt me. I ask your esteemed father if you are a man now. <laughs> he said, you have the cojones. No, dile que estoy muy contento de seguir llevando este nombre y me estoy esforzando. Quiero hacer más y dejar escrita mi historia en el boxeo. Creo que cada día me consolido más. I'm very happy to carry the name and I'm forcing myself every day to make history in the world of boxing and every day I'm doing better. Puedo decir una cosa. Dile que que quiero decir algo, mis piernas me dolieron desde el primer round y le, es por eso que no pude acabarlo antes. No son pretextos, no me gusta hablar de más, pero from, yo lo hubiera podido no quiero cuando yo quiera, más que estaba malo de las piernas, no podía moverme. From the first round my legs were bothering me and I could have knocked them out earlier. There's no no excuses. 
But I could have knocked him out earlier if it wasn't for my leg. You complained of leg cramps in your corner? Sí, estaban los calambres en mis piernas. Dile que no, no me podía mover, es por eso estaba tan parado, cachando golpes. Es un problema que tengo de antes y me apareció aquí, pero gracias a Dios pude resolverlo y ganar. There was some cramps and that's why I was standing up so straight. It's something that comes from the past though, but I was able to win. Back in January, you said you weren't in the kind of shape to fight Martinez. Do you feel now, after this victory and these conditioning, that you want him next? Si no tengo mis piernas porque no voy a tenerlas esa noche, lo voy a noquear para callarle la boca. With my legs, I'm going to knock him out that night so he can shut his mouth. Thank you. Congratulations again, Julio. Yeah. Yeah. Andy, tough, tough fight. What was he better at than you anticipated? Um, no, I got no excuses. He's a good fighter. My punches had no effect on him. I couldn't hold him off. A lot of fights, a lot of punches I heard through there could have hurt a lot of people, but he just walked through them. And, uh, so that you are a puncher, but he's got a chin that you have to beat him some other way. And he's a big middleweight. Um, he, he's, he's heavy, you know, and it's hard to move him with my shots. You know Martinez, you fought a lot of fights with him. You're in the same camp with him. Tell us what you think of Julio fighting Mar Sergio Martinez. I think it's a tough fight for Sergio, just because of the size difference. And he's, he's a lot better than people give him credit for. He's not, he's a champion for a reason. You I know. said he was a good fight for Sergio, or are you yeah, saying that because of the size difference, yeah, it's a hard fight? Hard fight for Sergio, because he's a big fighter. He's got a big heart and a good chin. And, um, I give him a like card, I tip my hat to him, he's just a good champion. Thank you, Andy, for a brave fight. Jim? Well, there was a perception even coming into this year that Chavez Jr. was still being protected, and particularly that he was being kept away from legitimate middleweight champion Sergio Martinez. But now, promoter Bob Arum seems very anxious to go forward toward the fight, says that he has a verbal agreement with Lou DiBella, who promotes Martinez to make the fight happen. Martinez has been brilliant and is number three on most pound-for-pound -pound list, but he still describes himself as basically a junior middleweight, 154-pound fighter by nature, fighting and dominating in the middleweight division is he big enough to actually beat julio cesar chavez jr it's a fascinating question which we hope to see answered this fall meanwhile earlier tonight we invited you to watch the replay of pacquiao bradley and then cast your vote for who you thought won the fight on our hbo boxing facebook poll let's take a look at what the results look like at this very moment you watched the fight 91 percent of you believe that pacquiao won it seven percent of you believe that bradley won it and 2% believe it was a draw. Next on HBO, stay tuned for my live half-hour boxing show, The Fight Game, followed by two days, no need to air. And now for our entire crew, I'm Jim Lampley. Thank you for being with us for this edition of World Championship Boxing. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports.